nice cup of coffee a la Zip, huh? We're not here for the coffee, Marty. Zip always knows more than what he lets on. It'd be worth interrogating the old trash panda. Trash panda. If he forgave us for wrecking his joint last time. He'll never forgive us, Marty, but we helped him out of trouble so many times, he's not gonna have any choice. I hope you're right, old bird. Ah, jeez, boys. Out of 2,000 joints in the city, had to end up here, huh? Yep. Hello to you, too, Zip. How's it hanging? I had no problems until now. Ah, oh, don't be such a drama queen. We just want to ask you a couple of questions, then we're out of here. And we won't even trash your place this time. What do you say? I say let's get it over with very, very quickly, chickens. Relax, pal. We'll be as fast as a hummingbird. I'm not your pal, and you're as far from a hummingbird as I'm from a polar bear. Oh, come on, Zip. Don't be so hard on yourself. We've just come from the Czar Club, Zip. Who do you think we met? Uh, if I can guess one, I'd say, uh, was it His Majesty Hobart Ibn Wessler, the Rat Prime himself? That on, pal. What a surprise. So, what do you want to know? Just because I don't know anything. Of course you don't. Just a couple questions. Go on, boys. Hurry up, will you? Look what we found, Zip. Furry hell! Who'd you beat to death for that? Beat to death? Who do you think we are? We simply confiscated it. You sneaky broilers. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. It's worth three times that. Aw, oh, come on. Give me a break. Tough luck, Trash Panda. We also ran into what, Filmar. Just flexing on him? <laughs> Flex on the trash panda? A grumpy old oh, raggedy see. ass hawk. His manners are even worse than mine. Ring a bell? You mean Marlo? Was Marlo. Now he goes by Filmar Low. Oh, I see. So that means he's still alive? Yeah, I'm almost not surprised. The old guy has a reputation of being indestructible, huh? He is. And he gave us something that could mean something. Look at this, Zip. Holy crap, what's this? The guest list at a king's birthday party? Hey, that's not even a bad guess. What do you make of it? This piece of paper's from so high up where I've never been myself, boys. So don't ask me. We spoke to Natasha. She's scared. My finger won't pop. Well, it's not good life insurance to be the girl of the most powerful gangster in the city. It's not about that. Someone's been writing offensive messages to her. She feels threatened. I only know that every second husband in the city wants to have her, and every second wife wants to wring her neck because of that. Nothing else. Thanks, Zip, but we're not any further ahead. But not further back, right? Damn it, what's the scribbler doing here? Sniffing some juicy story. I think I still owe him a great big left hook. <laughs> what did he do this time? Oh, nothing. Just since I first met him, I wanted to punch him in the face. I can understand that. Hello, Timothy. Scribblers don't celebrate New Year's. Hello, boys. <laughs> what a pleasure to see you. Answering your question, no, 
Not really. Not me, anyway. I'm always where the story is. Mm-hmm. And where's the story now? I can't see it anywhere. It just stepped through the door, pal. Oh, you mean us? Well, I think I'll have to disappoint you. The chicken police are back together? I, I can't let that go without an ink stain, am I right? No, Timmy, you can. We're not working, we're just having a little fun, that's all. Mm, I'm not buying that, boys. You'll have to, Tim. Eh, we'll see about that. I don't know, Sonny. What exactly are we doing here? Let's hope we can learn something about Natasha and Ivan by sniffing around before we visit that weekend house in Flowerville. Learn something? From Phyllis and Roy's? Well, I wasn't exactly thinking about them. Yeah, figures. How's it going tonight, boys? Uneventful so far, Sonny. But now that you're rolling together again, I suppose we'll have some excitement to look forward to. What do you mean? Are you kidding? Last time you shot up a theatre, and if I remember correctly, each other. <laughs> a theater. I didn't know we shot up that was a uh, complicated evening. I sure <laughs> complicated. Do you still remember, Philmar? Do you mean Philip? Of course I remember. He's got quite the reputation with that Philmar alias. We just met him. Small world, huh? Do you know what he's up to these days? Yeah, as far as I know, he's investigating petty blackmail cases and sneaking after poor bastards cheating on their wives. Anything else? Did he get mixed up in something that stirred up a storm recently? Yeah, I don't know about that. We haven't seen him at the PD for a while. He's usually a frequent visitor. Why? Did he run into some fishy business again? Possible, Bosco. But I'm not sure he'd want to make the same mistake. Wise decision. Listen, Bosco. What do you make of this list? Maybe it's the guest list of some fancy ball. These are some rather influential names, the ones I recognize anyway. Movie stars, politicians, a few names from the Council of Twelve even, if I'm not mistaken. You're not. Are you blackmailing them? Because if you are, I'll gladly accept a nice big juicy bone in exchange for my silence. Stop screwing around, Bosco. It has nothing to do with our case. Which is what, exactly? Mm, we're still not gonna tell you. Listen, Bosco, what have you heard about that singer, Natasha Katsenko? <laughs> you mean that little bimbo fooling around with Ibn Wessler? They say she's the jackpot, but I've never been into cats, you know. You couldn't be more racist if you tried, Bosco. <laughs> don't misunderstand me. I don't have a problem with cats at all. I'm simply allergic to them. I can't stand being around them. I don't even take cases with cats. Good for you. I should have used that excuse myself. <laughs> Why? Is your investigation related to her? What? No, of course not. We, we just came from her show. That's why I asked. <laughs> and what's she like? Well, I guess your cat allergy would go away for the rest of your life if you met her. <laughs> really? Uh, maybe I'll have a go and see for myself one day. Hey, big guy. Hey, Cox, what's up? Back here so soon? Did you get nostalgic all of a sudden, Sonny? I'd rather be anywhere else than here, Bosco. But we're sniffing around on a case. Who? Are you trespassing again? Not yet. Who? Us? What are you thinking? Ah, uh, just an old case. Still open. Not official, but not active either. We're not bothering anyone. 
You know, old habits die hard. I know, I know. I'm just messing with you. So, how can I help you? So soon? That was fast. Almost a record. Sorry, Mon. We're just here for a little, uh, info. When are you not here for that, boys? How about wish me a happy birthday for a change? You, what? Is it your birthday today? Of course not. Don't be silly, Marty. You know exactly when it is. We've talked about it a dozen times. Yeah, <laughs> of course I know. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, could you help us with this and that? Of course, boys, but be quick about it. I'm in over my head with paperwork and blood boils breathing down my neck. We'll be quick like a hurricane. Guess who we met today in person, Mon? King Hector III? Even better, the one who commands the king. Wait a minute, Hobart Wessler? Damn right, Hobart Ibn Wessler in the flesh. Wow, and you're still alive. That's quite an accomplishment. But seriously, have you heard that he wants to get out of the black market business? Allegedly, he's trying to clear his name with some kind of new meat substitute. His name's gonna be rather difficult to clear. It's a heroic and impossible venture. I haven't heard about it, but it's an interesting addition to what I know. Which is? Eben's been acting very strange lately, and he left most of his business dealings to one of his goons, Mickey. Also known as the Butcher, the Mongrel, and the Slayer. Yeah, we once had the pleasure of meeting him. That's all I know, boys. I know it's not very much, but it's something, I guess. I'll keep my ears open. Thanks, Mon. Listen, Mon, a reliable old friend shoved this into my hand. Could you take a quick glance at it? Hmm, quite an imposing list. What could those numbers mean? It could be a date even, but no, this is something else. That's what we were thinking too, and we got nowhere. But you see a lot of documents. So Unfortunately not, boys. The names are imposing indeed, but based on this, it could be almost anything. The richest of the rich get together on all kinds of excuses. Huh, it must be a secret cult. It could be, of course, but also anything else. I'm sorry I couldn't help you more. Ah, oh, don't mention it, Mon. Thanks for your time. Or, wait a minute. There is something. Oh, stop teasing us, Mon. I'm sure you've noticed that all the names in the list are men, right? Yeah, uh, of course we noticed. Uh, thanks for the observation, Monica. Don't mention it. I'm just a receptionist. We saw a pretty good show at the Tsar Club tonight. Good for you, I guess. Natasha? Natasha. She performed a new song. She also sang about why she called us there. Or rather, me. And? That's confidential, Dollface. Anyway, I can't help wondering about that woman. Her past is a mystery. And I couldn't draw much out of her in person, either. Women like her always have something to hide, Sonny. I think that's exactly what makes men fall head over heels for them. Oh, I know another broad who's all mysterious. Oh, yeah? What's her name? I'll look her up if we have a file on her. Marty, shut up. Oh, you mean me, right? All mysterious, full of secrets, and grace. I didn't even hear that, Marty. <laughs> Do we have a file on a woman called Olivia Blackwig? She's currently working as Ibn Wessler's assistant. Hmm, we don't have a file on her, but there are a few Blackwigs that could be related to her. Mountain Goat, Crow, or Cayman? Crow, around 30 to 35. A very pretty socialite. Maybe we have a catch then. Theodore Blackwig was a rather influential banker until he went bankrupt. 
He died a few years back, but his daughter could have ended up in the same social circles as Eben. And since they lost their money, she took a job as his assistant. Yeah, it would fit the picture. But it's a big city, Sonny. There are maybe more than one Crow family with a Blackwig name living here. Hmm. Thanks, Mom. I'm glad I could help, boys, as always. If it doesn't take a lot of my time, that is. We know, we know. We're not even here anymore. You're very lucky, boys. You just missed the boss by three minutes. Right now, he's trying to get Malloy out of the toilet. Still can't hold his liquor, huh? Neither on or off duty, but today he is sloshed. Well, he's a water buffalo, isn't he? He knows how to swim. Uh, no, Sonny, just a buffalo. The two are totally different things. Miss Jardine, one of the seven female officers of the Clawville PD. Officer Barkman, unwavering cop and a slavering beast. If there's one thing I'd learned during 20 years of detective work, it's that if someone wants to meet you at a remote location at night, you should bring an army for backup. One time, me and Marty were stupid enough to underestimate a situation like that, and we never really recovered. And yet, here we were again, about to step alone into something hauntingly familiar. Only one tactic remained, as the old dogs say. Balls to the wall. <laughs> Just go for it. Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. I wouldn't say I like it either. Let's take a look around before we go inside. Textbook. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Shut up, Marty. It's not a good sign. Maybe she just lost it when she hurried into the house. Yeah, right. Do you think it belongs to Natasha? No idea. Do you think I measured her feet when I was in her room? I'm not sure I want to know, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> so, this is the word. What can I say? The message is loud and clear. Yeah, what matters is who is it for and what does it mean? I can't misunderstand that if I wanted to. We'll see. Wait a second, did that bimbo put a spell on you? As you used to say, don't let it cloud your objective judgment, boss bird. Watch who you're talking to, boy. Chicken police, hands up. Marty, that's enough. Marty, before we enter, did you bring Big Bertha? Of course. She's in the trunk. It's time to get Her Majesty out. That's what I like to hear. Let's go. Hello, my beauty. Just don't point it at me. Aw, oh, scared? Take it easy. I swore I'm not gonna shoot you again. Very gallant of you, partner. Why, are you still pissed at me? I'm happy to remind you why you got shot the first time. I get it. Just shut the fuck up already. <laughs> it's the nothing. Uh, what was that? The nothing. Eh, forget it. Just an old quote from a movie. It means it's fucking dark in here. <sighs> Flashlight. I didn't bring one. Uh, me neither. What a pair of fucking professionals. <laughs> yep. But you do have a shotgun with you. We should have shotguns for this kind of deal. 
Is that from an old movie? No, it's an original. Figures. <laughs> Aww. Poor dead girl. She was lying on the floor as if she was sleeping. She looked peaceful, almost. The large pool of blood ruined the picture. Poor, delicate Deborah. Maybe you were too pure and innocent for this city, but in the end, its filth pulled you under. You know, no animal can swim in high heels. Wild gods, fuck even. Yeah, it's her, Deborah, the girl who came to my office. I figured, but what the hell happened? Was it Natasha? Is this what you wanted us to see? No. I mean, I don't think so, Marty. She seemed very attached to the girl, and I believed her. Furthermore, she has no motive to kill her. Natasha meant some object. Something maybe the killer wanted, too. And the poor girl was trying to protect it. Did she seem that kind of girl? She risked a lot simply by coming to see me. She would have done it for her mistress. Why is she naked? Was this sexual? I mean, there's no sign of struggle. She seems untouched. Maybe she knew her assailant. Was it a lover? This looks premeditated. So far, the messages have appeared in weird places, but this, this is a new level. It's no longer just about empty threats. Well, maybe Natasha's on her way here right now. Or she was already here and something happened to her too. Kidnapped or worse. Those are possibilities, but we can't wait. We don't have time for guessing. Search the house, search everything. The room's not trash. Whoever did this wasn't looking for the same thing we are. Or they knew exactly where to find it. Wait, what are we looking for exactly? I Amen to that. Ah, dang it. My mouse double clicked. We should call the department. Anonymously, of course. Do you still remember the number? I haven't called my own workplace in years. Cretan. Of course I remember. 555-111. Is it? Since when? Since they invented the telephone. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, I knew that. I was just testing you. Yeah, right. PD, how can I help you? Uh, I found a corpse. A woman. She's dead. Cold. The address is Rochester Street, 37, Flowerville. Sir, please, would you repeat that? Rochester Street, 37. Write it down and hurry up for the sake of the wild ones. Hurry, hurry. Like a pro. Yep, like I've done it before. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. <laughs> How can you forget a case like that? How many times have you seen a three-headed monkey in your life? Never. I have a memory of a chicken, you know. That's for sure. Now let's get the hell out of here. Damn. Just like in the adventure books. Rich animals are all insane. You have a point. A 
you can't be serious. <laughs> Is this some kind of... Yeah, it's a riddle, Marty. But it doesn't make any sense. Why use something as simple as this when a four-digit number is almost impossible? An idle whim, or the riddle has a meaning. Maybe. Four animals into four places. What does it represent? Think, Marty. Where did we see four animals holding something in their hands? This must be Natasha's family. Yeah, wealthy. Do you think she's from the Stavonian Tsar's family? Oh, nobody could have survived that massacre. But I'm sure this family was also close to the fire. What is she doing here anyway? What, an alias? Keeping secrets and now this case? Do you think it's all connected somehow? Let's not draw hasty conclusions, Marty. Family not approving of... It's an exceptionally Western. beautiful piece. What does it depict, I wonder? I have no idea, Sonny. It's so art, I'm scared to have an opinion. Here, too. Yes, but this isn't about Deborah and wasn't meant for her. Poor Deborah. It was meant for Natasha. Obviously. What have we gotten ourselves into, Sonny? I don't know, Marty, but let's get ourselves out of it as soon as possible. Anything interesting in there? Yeah, I think there is. SN could be the initials of a person, a, a place, a company, or a club. Too many possibilities, but we must find out where it's from. We stepped into it, didn't we?
everything all right, old man? If there's something we can do for you, uh, just say so, okay? Well, all right. What's up, Zip? Quiet night, I see. That's exactly what I asked him when he wound up here. But yeah, he's a regular nowadays. He must be sniffing some kind of story about the hive. About the riots? Have they reached here already? I ain't seen nothing. More cops around, yeah, as you can see for yourself. We're not on duty, Zip. It's still the same. A cop's a cop. A lot come by, but besides beating up bugs, nothing much happens. It will, Zip. I can sniff it in the air. If you say so, Sonny. <laughs> Maybe once. Hello there. What could this be? I don't know. Maybe why a piece of a painting. Sun, and I actually don't know why that worked, but my brain said do it. <laughs> and there's some kind of squiggle on it. The signature of the painter? Yeah, I can't make it out. It's a piece of a painting. Judging by how well it was hidden, I'm sure this is what Natasha wanted to show us. So a piece of a painting? That's it? And what's that smear on it? It's too illegible to be a signature. It could be anything. Maybe Natasha can help us. After all, this is what she wanted to show us, isn't it? Well, that's if we find her. She should be here by now. True. Well, then what's next? How about we peck around town some more? We could do that, but I think we should gather what we know and try to figure out where we can go from here. A uh, bourbon in my office? Ah, uh, you know what? After all this, I could use a drink. Right answer.
Should we say hi to the old beaver? Sure. Mullen is an old, old friend, so he certainly deserves a hello. And we do need information. Few people know as much about Clawville as the old woodchomper. An encyclopedia in the flesh. Yeah, he always has something. We're getting older and older, and Mullen's not changing a bit. Where's the justice in that? He's just eternal. Like an ancient god or something. Or the personification of the city. What a yeah, true. Oops. But that wasn't uh, very uh, politically correct, coming from you, pal. Hey, you know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know, Marty. You're too good for this world. Ah, oh, thanks, boss. It wasn't a compliment, Marty. The Clawville Chronicle. The most read and probably the most biased newspaper in the city. It's supposed to be a royalist rag, but the separatist overtones are getting stronger and stronger every day. Chandler's used to be quite a prestigious cafe. Magnificent animals had breakfast here. And in the evenings, philosophers and writers would get drunk together and argue. The place is now just a second-hand bookshop, just a shadow of its former self, like so many things in this city, like me. Hey, Hercule, what's up, old friend? Hello, me lads, it's good to see you. What are you doing around here where you never see a cat, go boy? We're working, Uncle Mullen, just like you. But I'm afraid we're also walking a little bit outside the law. But it's New Year's Eve. Couldn't it wait a bit? Whatever the case is, it can't be that serious. I'm afraid it is. Maybe you can help us with a few things. After all, you know everyone in the city. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what a compliment. But of course I'll help if I can. I know you ever since you appeared in the city. Young, fresh, full of ambition. And little Marty had been just a chick when he was already coming here every day with his daddy, eh? <laughs> You're like me son, so yeah. Oh, thanks, Uncle Mullen. Eben's a ruthless gangster, that's for sure. But he's not bloodthirsty or stupid. You're not in danger until you're in his way. And that's not so easy to manage as the whole city's in his hands. How come they never tried to approach you, Uncle? What? <laughs> of course they tried. They wanted to buy the whole area and build some huge parking garage on it. Mongrel Mick, Eben's number one pug, came here and threatened me more than once. If I hadn't dug me heels in, the others would have sold up. The lawyers behind me, even Biff, the owner of Chandler's. But I told them, over my call, dead carcass. Carcass. Well, oh, looks like it worked. <laughs> I'm too much for them, lads. Or I'm just too famous around here to get rid of. We could say Ibn's almost almighty, but he avoids scandal like rats avoid fire. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm a poor nobody, my lads, but my name still carries meaning. This place has always belonged to my family. If my dead body had been found here or in the times, it would have caused a scandal, even without any evidence. So he usually listens to reason. Eh, yeah, when I talked to him tonight, he seemed confused, dissolute, and impetuous to me. That's uncharacteristic. Are you sure it was him? Are you joking? Ibn Wessler's not usually confused with anyone else. Of course I'm joking. Beaver humor, you know? <laughs> Nobody gets it. Not even the beavers. So do you know when you're joking? Ha! <laughs> Good one again. Hey, Martin Millet, what's up? How's that beautiful wife of yours? Laura's perfectly fine, thank you. It's crazy you could grab an amazing woman like her, son. Are you blackmailing her with something? Ah, I missed your famous beaver humor. I'm just messing with you, son. 
Anyway, you look good. You're in good shape. You look more like a turkey than a rooster, if you ask me. Um, thanks. This is priceless. Thanks, Hercule. We'll be back again soon. Yeah, sure will. Nice girl. She used to come here for a while, but I, I think she moved downtown. Yeah, she's the poster girl for workaholism. She lives in an apartment across from the PD, but sleeps at the station, if she sleeps at all. Some animals just race and race through the years of their life until someone stops them, makes them wind down. Is there someone like that waiting for everyone? Indeed there is, somewhere. <laughs> Usually not where we're looking for them. Yeah, right. How's Desiree? What about her? She's still beautiful, and she's still my wife. And I still don't get why she hasn't left me already. Because she's too much like you, you stubborn old damn builder. You see, you're right about that, sonny boy. Yeah. Cubs? <laughs> More like jumbo cubs. John sees a hotshot lawyer in Galadia, and Timmy also left Clawville to try his luck in Grassmore. But who could blame them? Good move. Ah, yeah, but they visit me often, though. They're good kids. I know, pal. They're from a good letter. <laughs> if you say so, Sonny. You know anything about a woman named Natasha Katsenko? Sonny boy, what have you gotten yourself into again? That lass is Ibn Wessler's protege, to put it politely. She's the crown jewel of the city. A shining new star. If you dare talk to a girl such as her, you can expect some serious lead poisoning, me boy. Well, I suppose I should have come to you first for advice. Doesn't matter now. We're in it, Uncle. Up to our combs. If you'll accept the advice of an old shaggy beaver, get to the end of it as quickly as you can and try to make it out with all your feathers. Yeah, that's the plan. But do you know anything about her? Anything, uh, interesting? As I've heard, Natasha is quite a mysterious lass. She came from the Stavonian Sardom and fled to Clawville, but from what? No one knows. Some years of her life are shrouded in mystery, and that really means good. You're right about that. So, uh, that's your advice? Be careful. At least, silly boy. And one more thing. At least, What's that? Never fall in love with a woman like her. Thanks, Hercule. I wasn't planning to. Nobody plans to, Sonny. Just take care of each other, okay? And always carry a good gun in your pocket. Oh, I always have one in every pocket, old-timer. I know, Martin. I know. <laughs> What's up, old man? Is everything all right? Uh, me bones are creaking. The eyesight's getting more and more blurry. And sometimes I hear sounds that aren't even there. I think I'm getting old. Or maybe I've gone crazy already. But the old ticker's still ticking. So, here I am. Ah, it's good to still have an old familiar spot in the city. Ah, nothing lasts forever, boys. So, what is this dirt you've ended up in again, eh? Ah, uh, just a simple case, strumming personal strings. That's why I couldn't refuse it. You know the tune. Well, well, ah, yeah, yeah. Same old song, eh? Yeah, it's a classic. <laughs> So what are we doing here again, Sonny? I don't know. Maybe we could question Natasha. Do you think she's here? Who knows, Marty? We'll see. There's Philmar. Maybe he knows something. Yeah, if he's not drunk as a skunk. Stop projecting onto others, old chicken. Ah, shut the clock up, Marty. No, oh, I'm sorry I hurt your precious feelings, boss bird. 
Hey, old bird. What are you waiting for out here in the rain? Is that you, boys? I'm a little uh, tired. I can see that, pal. Oh, it's all right. I just can't find my car. I don't see very well in the rain. It's my eyesight's pretty bad. I should wear glasses. <laughs> Imagine that. A hawk wearing glasses. Yeah, it's funny. There ain't nothing funny about it, Snowflake. Whoa, all right. Sorry. Have you seen uh, Natasha or Ibn since we left? Ibn? Uh, he got put off a long time ago. Natasha? I haven't seen her. Thanks anyway, pal. Uh, good luck with finding your car. You uh, want some help? Could it be that I didn't come here by car? What do you think, Sonny? Your old friend? Well, I wouldn't know that, Phil, but uh, you take care, all right? Ah, uh, you're telling me? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Again, Bojack. <laughs> Please don't call me that, sir. <laughs> you're right. I'm sorry. Uh, what's your name again? Well, if you really must know, I'm Lance, sir. Okay, Lance. Listen, it's very important. Oh, please, sir. Don't get me involved in anything. I just want to get my shift over with and go home to sleep. Relax, there won't be a problem. Just answer the questions honestly. Oh, if I must, let's give it a try. Right, kid. Lance. Ah, Lance, yeah. So, have you seen Natasha since her performance? No, no, don't ask me anything about Miss Kitsenko and Mr. Westler. It could cost me my job, or even more. Hey, it's a matter of national security. It could be. Yeah, see, it could be. So, if you help, you won't only be helping us, but the Crown and the whole city of Clawville. Oh, okay, all right, just stop that chicken shit, will ya? I saw Natasha, yeah. She came down, spoke with someone, then stormed out the front door. And then what happened? She came right back in, two or three minutes later, soaked to the bone. She was in a hurry. She went up to her suite, then came back down and left. And you haven't seen her since? I genuinely haven't seen her ever since, sir. Thanks, Lance. You've been a great help. I'm happy to hear that. So Natasha had left. Seems so, but she never arrived at the weekend house. Then? Then we'll stay with the original plan. We'll gather our thoughts at the office and go over everything we know. Okay, Boss Bird, lead the way. So we meet again. How unpleasant. I'm sorry, Olivia. We won't keep you long. Perhaps you could tell us if you've seen Natasha. She hired you and you already lost sight of her? That's unfortunate. We should have met her, but she didn't show up. Should we be worried? Are you asking me that? I haven't seen her since she was on stage. Not like I was paying any attention to her or anything. Thanks, sweetheart. We won't bother you anymore. Thanks, Olivia. Don't mention it. Do you come here often, Olivia? No, not really. Well, okay. Thanks. You're welcome. 
You know, Ivan's not as ferocious as you'd think. On the contrary, he's become very different recently. I heard. Don't you find that weird? A sudden change of heart? Well, thank you for your honesty, ma'am. You know, Ibn's not as ferocious as you'd think. On the contrary. I heard. Sometimes an animal just has enough. Fed up and wants a change. I deeply respect that. Well, thank you for your honesty, ma'am. What's your relationship with Miss Natasha Katsenko? We've talked a bit. That's all. There's no uh, tension between you? You know, the pretty secretary. Well, thank you for your compliment, Mr. Featherland. No, no tension. Natasha's an intelligent woman. I respect her. Is that mutual? That I can't tell. Phyllis and Roy's are nowhere to be seen. Praise the great wild ones. Well, let's hope this is a good omen. Maybe finally the pincushions have started to do something with themselves. And maybe it's not a coincidence, since we've just found a dead body, Marty. Yeah, what can I say? The night's starting to get off, huh? Just like the good old days. Well, let's just hope there won't be any more surprises tonight. You don't believe that, do you, boss? I see the boss is ready to explode today. What did you expect? The madness kicked in and he's gotta be at the PD. Deputy Malloy's blind drunk. Uh, what's the name of the old man's wife again? Uh, poor lady. Marsha. She was waiting here for a while, too, hoping it'll only take a few minutes. But as soon as they saw the state Malloy was in, she got into a taxi and went home. So that's why the old hound's so angry. Please, boys, don't make him more so, all right? Unfortunately, I can't promise that, doll. As usual. Look what we found, Mon. Does this mean anything to you? It's beautiful. Embossed, gilded. These are rare, but I've never seen anything like this one before. Where's it from? I'm afraid that's a secret, at least for now. You haven't taken vital evidence from a crime scene, I hope. Oh, what are you thinking? On my feathers. You're gonna be in trouble, boys. Only if we don't wrap it up, Mon. Listen, Mon, uh, that girl they found in Flowerville. You've seen her, right? Yes, we were first on the scene. Boys, you know I should report you immediately, don't you? We know, Mon. We're only asking for a little more time. We're hot on the trail. If you learn anything, would you uh, please tell us? Are you crazy? Hey, keep it down. Blood boils right behind us. Please, Mon. It's a matter of life and death. God damn. Okay, but only because I can see how much it means to you. Thanks, doll. We'll be forever grateful. Good old Filmar hasn't been sniffing around here recently. Yeah, he was here a week and a half ago. He used the archives and took out some public records. That's all. I hope you said no. Why are you so interested, Marty? No, I'm not. I just... just... I told him no. Just like I told you no on all 25 occasions. Ah, <sighs> glad to hear that. Officer Bartman, one of Blood Boil's little protégés. Shouting in three, two, one. And action. Martin, what the hell do you think you're doing? 
We're just patrolling, sir. At the station? No, we're here for something else, sir. You missed me, huh? No, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I, I mean... Why are you grinning, Santino? I can't grin, sir. I have a beak. Oh, be cute. I can see it in your eyes. Should I close them, sir? Don't you peck at me, chicken. You hear? We're not even here anymore, Chief. We just quickly stopped by for something. Get out of my sight. Yes, sir. We had no choice but to continue the investigation where it started. In that shady little apartment I called home. The only lead was the list Fillmore gave us, with all those imposing names on it. But what could it mean? And why did Natasha keep it secret from us? But most importantly, what did all this have to do with Deborah's death? The trail started to get cold and so did the air outside. There was something unsettling in the black clouds, hiding all the stars. I prayed that they didn't bring an early snowfall. The night was already painful enough. So, what are we doing here? Trying to calm down. I'll have a shot. Sure you will. And we're trying to put the pieces together, of course figure out what's next. And what is next, Boss Bird? Let's take a look at what we've learned so far. So, how did this whole case start? are meant for Natasha, no doubt about that. But there was something Natasha didn't speak about. Natasha is terrified, and she's in real danger. But she kept this list hidden from us. It seems too important to keep it a secret. But what can we do with this list? I know only one person who moves in circles high enough to know where it's from. Lewis. We must ask him if we want to get out of this dead end. So, the card is... Uh, Ah, oh, maybe a dead end. The piece of painting, too. But the list Philmar gave us... Exactly. Full of those imposing names. And I only know one person who moves in similar circles. Lamar! Yes, Marty. It's Lewis. Exactly. Of course, it's Lewis. But where do we find the bunny man? Well, since he owns this building, I'm hoping he's here. It's worth a call. You know his number? By heart, 555-932. Five, 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 I wrote it down in my notebook as well. Oh, you are a professional, Boss Bird.
Hey, Lewis, uh, sorry to disturb you again. Uh, could you come over to my place? I uh, have a question for you. It's very important. It's about a case. A real case? You can believe it. Of course, Sonny. I'll be over in a few minutes. Thanks, pal. I owe you one. Thanks, Lewis. Again. Oh, don't mention it. Besides, it was my big dream, dream to help you with a serious case. Well, let's hope you can help. What can you tell me about this list, old pal? Hmm. Well, well, these names. I know half of them personally. Maybe even more. I knew it. But I have no idea what kind of list this is. Here we go. But these are all members of the upper c c class. Politicians, business people. Oh my. <clears throat> Even the commander of the Royal Guard. Damn. But I really don't know what it means. So, is it a dead end? I'm a... Afraid so. Deborah, the girl who came to me tonight. Yes, she's a very lovely young lady. Where did you take her after you two left? Where she asked me to. To Flowerville. Flowerville? Rochester Street 37? Yes, exactly. Why? Luck. <gasps> Did something happen? Nothing good, Lewis. Nothing good. I don't know what you s s said to him, but after you finished, he almost immediately van van disappeared. Really? That's suspicious. Or he had business elsewhere. It's New Year's Eve. Everybody's going somewhere. This? This? Oh, 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 my goodness. I think we have a bingo, gentlemen. You see, I also have one of these. A card? Like this? Really? Y yes. It's a membership card to a very exclusive club. How exclusive? Very. That's what I'm talking about. What does SN mean, Lewis? It's the s s sweltering Nile. But that's a... Well, yes, it's a brothel. But it's not, not like that. It's something completely different. Calm down, Lewis. We're not going to tell anybody. Thank you so much. It is rather embarrassing. <clears throat> Listen, Lewis. How do we get in? Shoo! Why to get in? Well, if you could show them this card, they'll surely let you in. But it will be obvious you're not regulars there. We're used to that. So... Are we going to correct, Marty? Thanks for the help, Lewis. I owe you one. For the third time today, I think. I didn't see... I didn't see her after the show. If I'm not mistaken, she usually leaves when everyone else has already left. What else do you know about her, Lewis? Oh, not much. What everybody knows, she was a dancer. Then a backing singer, then st star, and then club owner. We found out as much already. Do you think she'd fled the Stavonian massacre? That's why the secrecy. Do you mean the massacre of the royal f family? I'd say her accent is a dead g giveaway, and her name too, though it's undoubtedly an alias. 
So it's possible that she is a part of the royal family. I d d don't think so. Nobody could have survived that whole, whole awful night. Uh, you're probably right. What should we know about the place, Lewis? Besides what they're uh, dealing in there? No, oh, it's an elegant and exclusive place. Not everybody visits them for, for, for that, you know. Some animals just go for c c company. I see. I guess it's mostly visited by the upper class. M mostly, yes. The wealthy who have a taste. Yes, of course. Is it true what they say, that it's some kind of hidden stronghold of the royalists? The Nile is a proud herald of the coexistence of all the sp species, yes. But stronghold? I don't think so. But the place must be an eyesore for the separatists, right? Oh, don't, 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 don't worry for the girls, S -s -s Sonny. They can defend themselves quite well. The S -s -s separatists wouldn't dare to go near the place. Well, we'll see what they have to say about these two old cocks. Uh, that was a little bit um, equivocal.